So, did anybody catch it here? Chapter 13 of Hosea, verse 13. Once again, the numeric code for Revelation chapter 13, verse 13. The giving of the double, the second cup unto Babylon. This is the unwise move that the unwise son Ephraim commits, that final act to birth in the New World Order, to birth in these locusts, to break the seal, to bring forth these descendants, the children of the Anunnaki and the daughters of man, and also to bring forth this man-child known as the Antichrist, as he seeks to fulfill himself in the physical Adam, to become that man whose number is 666. This is what Ephraim is committing in his unwise decision. And it just so happens, not by chance, to be on chapter 13, verse 13. So Ephraim is committing an un unwise act to birth forth this time of the New World Order. So now we go to chapter 9, verse 13, to find out what exactly is this unwise act all about. Well, it's a sacrifice. Verse 13, Ephraim, as I saw, Tyrus is planted in a pleasant place, but Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. Ephraim's unwise move to bring about these fallen is to commit the sacrifice of his very own children. And while Ephraim brings this sacrifice, this fire from the sky, he plans on being in a pleasant place. Some of you know that that's the moon. And some of them will take residence inside the earth. Nonetheless, Ephraim plans on being very safe when it brings this fire from the sky of chapter 13, verse 13 of Revelation to usher in the 13th judge of Israel at the end of the 13th Bakhtun to align with the 13th astrological sign, which is the serpent judge, Dan. Making sense to you? So, if you can follow all that and understand that, then consider what we already understood about Ephraim now being declared as the very shepherd of Israel, the very leader of Israel. And unfortunately, these people that are being led by Israel in the last days who are looking to all of Israel's ritual feast days for the supposed coming of the Lord is really only finding about the prophecy of the supposed coming of this Shiloh, this false God, this Antichrist. So the symbolism with Ephraim being connected as the very stone of Israel will bring us up now to Job chapter 38. Listen very closely. Line 30. The waters are hid as with a stone and the face of the deep is frozen. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of the Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? And we know that it's all about this dominion. Verse 33. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in earth? Who wants their dominion in earth? Well, it's these ones that have been bound or banded. It's these ones of Orion who bring forth the very sweet influences of the Pleiades, who they expect to have or expect to obtain after the sacrifice, this very sweetness after they commit the sacrifice. What does it describe? It says the abysmal waters, the source of their power is hid as with it is with a stone. The very face of the deep is frozen. This very face of the deep, this very face of the abyss, this understanding of the waters that are hid as with the stone will bring us to two places. One will be the very North Pole, which is the physical underneath the very physical civilization of the descendancy of the sons of God, known as this master race that the real society has already declared as this great Nordic Aryan race. That will be the army of Joel II. The other place that the waters are hid is with the stone will bring us to the great pyramids of Giza, the very great pyramid itself, which, will, which hides those that are bound in the abysmal waters that the book of Enoch even further clarifies that they are bound within this crystal. The great stone is the great pyramid, which is the great seal of Ephraim, who on this great seal of Ephraim has the very great pyramid itself, which is hiding the very source of their coming power.